Welcome everyone to MTG Deck Masters. In today's video, we are going to look at the top five modern decks right now. Those are the five best, most competitive decks you could play or play against in today's modern format. And this is not only uh, a good guide for those of you who want to build the best decks, but also if you want to beat the best decks, because the only way you can win right now in Modern is play those five decks or beat them. It's either you beat them or you join them. The first deck I want to talk about is Blue White Hammer Time. And over the past few years, well, a year or two, this deck has become really popular. And it used to be Black White, but now it has slowly fallen out of favor for Blue White or simply Mono White. Uh, as you can see, not a lot of blue spells, only one blue card in the main deck and a couple of white cards in the sideboard. So this deck, what does it do? It tries to equip a Colossus Hammer onto one of their creatures for free using Sigardus Aid or Pure Steel Paladin. And that's why it plays such cheap creatures, by cheap I mean free, Memnite and Ornithopter. And it even has cards like Springleaf Drum to generate extra mana in order to be as fast as possible. You could also win in one shot by equipping your Colossus Hammer onto your Ink Moth Nexus. Just note that Ink Moth Nexus uh, will lose flying when you equip the Colossus Hammer. But one thing you can do is equip the Colossus Hammer onto your Ink Moth Nexus and then activate Ink Moth Nexus again so it becomes a 1-1 flyer with flying and will gain flying back again. I know that's pretty cool because the loose flying is part of the ability of Colossus Hammer and then the flying goes on top of it after. So uh, in terms of creatures, you have Memnite, Ornithopter, Esper Sentinel, one of the best cards in Modern Horizons 2. Uh, really underrated card. I think it doesn't get the credit it deserves. This card is so powerful. Giver of Runes to protect your creatures. If you're still Paladin, it's card advantage and also a card that lets you equip your hammer for free. Stoneforge Mystic is a great alternate win condition in case you can't win with the hammer or it can also just get the hammer itself. Reality Chip is another card uh, recently added to the deck. One generic, one blue for a 0-4. Legendary Artifact Creature Equipment Jellyfish. You can see the text is pretty small. You may look at the top card of your library anytime and as long as it is attached to a creature, you may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. And it has Reconfigure for two generic and one blue which is attached to target creature control or unattached from a creature. It can only be done as a sorcery. And while it is attached, this is not a creature. So we can get this with the Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, spells, you have two Steel Shaper's Gift to get your equipments. You have plenty of choices, but this is very often going to get the Colossus Hammer. Uh, equipments, you have Paradise Mental to add extra mana, Colossus Hammer for the combo, Shadow Spear, to gain life against aggressive decks or against bogles in a pinch. You can activate it for one and make them lose X-proof and indestructible. Uh, Springleaf Drum is to add mana, but it's not an equipment. And you also have Nettle Cyst and Caldra Complete as additional uh, equipments. Those are both living weapons. So when they come into play, they make a 0-0 black germ and you attach it to it. Uh, Nettle Cyst get, makes a pretty big creature when you have a bunch of artifacts. And Caldra Complete is basically a better version of Batter Skull, but it's much more expensive. But once you have Stoneforge Mystic in play, it becomes much better. Or if you can equip it for free, it becomes a lot more interesting. Uh, when it comes to the lands, pretty basic blue-white mana base. Uh, well, white mana base with a splash of blue. But you also have four Urza Saga and three uh, Igmod Nexus as utility lands. Urza Saga is great at being an alternate win con with the big constructs. And also, uh, it can get your Colossus Hammer. And Ikmoth Nexus is also a win condition. In terms of sideboard, Blacksmith Skill, March of the Otherworldly Light, Pitting Needle, Relic for Progenitus, Spell Pierce, Lavinia, and Teferi Time Raveler. Uh, these three cards are the reason why you want to add blue along with the Reality Chip. And I think Lavinia and Teferi are very good sideboard cards right now. Now, the second deck is Boros Burn. This is going to make GG for Goblin Guide happy. This is one of the best decks in Modern and one of the most consistently good decks in the format. You can rarely go wrong playing Burn because it's always in the top 10 most played decks, always in the top 10 decks that finish the highest. Uh, it's pretty easy to play, very simple, and it has a lot of free wins. 
uh, especially against combo and control decks. Uh, very classic list when you look at the creatures you have Golem Guide, Swiss Spear, Eidolon. In terms of spells, just a bunch of burn spells Lava Spike, Lightning Bolt, Boros Charm, Helix, Searing Blaze, Skull Crack, Rift Bolt, Secure the Critic. So, nothing un unusual here. Just no light up the stage and only two Skull Crack and two Lightning Helix. Some people might prefer four Helix or four Skull Crack. It depends on the metagame. Uh, lands really basic uh, red and white. You have some Fetch Lands, Shock Lands. Fast lands and also one fiery outlet for Sunbait Canyon to get some more gas in the late game. In terms of sideboard, you have Path to Exile because you can't really play uh, Prismatic Ending in a two color deck. It's not as good, so Path to Exile is here. Deflecting Palm, Roiling Vortex, one of the new cards. Actually, this card has been around for about two years now and it's just recently being played in burn decks. Uh, it deals one damage to each player during their upkeep. And whenever a player casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast the spell, it deals 5 damage to that player. So this is great against Living End and Rhino decks, which are everywhere. More on that later. Spoiler alert. Same reason why Lavinia is played in Blue White Hammer Time. Uh, Sanctifier and Vec, just absolutely devastating against Graveyard decks and Combo decks. Smash Smithereen for Artifact decks. So Burn, definitely a great deck. Uh, pretty simple to play and it will always be around. Next, we have Amulet Titan, and this is one of the coolest decks Modern has to offer. This deck is based around lands. As a matter of fact, it plays 31 lands, so more than half the cards in the deck are lands. Um, the goal is basically to play an Amulet of Vigor, which is an artifact where whenever a permanent enters the battlefield tapped under control, you untap it. Then you play Bounce Lands, like Gruel Turf, that generates 2 mana and also returns the land control to its owner's hand, as well as Simic Growth Chamber. So what you do is you play the amulet, you play the bounce land, you untap it, you float 2 mana, return it back to your hand, then play it again, rinse and repeat to generate tons of mana. But how can you play multiple lands every turn? You have access to cards like Arboreal Grazer, Azusa, Dryad of the Elysian Grove, and the Primeval Titan can get extra lands. But the goal is to cast the Primeval Titan. Dryad is also great because it means you can play Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle, and when you have a bunch of lands in play, each land you drop will deal 3 damage or even more, depending on the number of Valakuts you have in play. Primeval Titan normally will get Slayer Stronghold as well as Boros Garrison, which is here. So you will untap both lands with the Amulet, you will use the 2 mana from the Boros Garrison to activate Slayer Stronghold, then attack with the Titan to get 2 extra lands, and you will probably get something like a Vesuva, as well as uh, Sun Home to give it double strike until end of turn and deal 16 damage. And that will usually be enough, but sometimes you can deal even more if you have a Valakin in play, uh, which can be uh, even better. Uh, next, you have Cultivator Colossus, which is an alternate threat to Primeval Titan. It's a 7 mana XX Trample. Power and Toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control. When it enters the battlefield, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. If you do, draw a card and repeat this process. So uh, this can be great with Valakut when you have Dryad in play. In terms of spells, you have some respect to get your Titan most of the time, but you will also be able to get your Azusa and the Dryad. Uh, especially when you have a bunch of lands, Dryad can be great to one-shot the opponent with Valakut. Explore to play additional lands because this deck is all about having a lot of lands in play and a lot of mana. Turn Timber Symbiosis is basically another land in this deck, so you basically have 33 lands. Uh, it just get, it gives you a lot more stuff to do with your mana and not be flooded in case you only draw lands. 7 mana, look at the top 7 cards of your library. You may put a creature card from a mundane onto the battlefield. That card has converted mana cost to or less and it turns with 3 additional plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So you can get your Titan or Cultivator Colossus with the Symbiosis. In terms of artifacts, you have Amulet of Vigor, obviously, one Expedition Map, and one Relic of Progenitus. But why do you have two one-ofs? It's because of Urza Saga, a new addition to this deck, well, relatively new. Helps you get your Amulet most of the time, but sometimes if you already have the Amulet, or you need to get rid of the opponent's graveyard, you can get the Relic, or you can get the ex Expedition Map if you really want to get something like Valakut. In terms of sideboard, you have Bajuka Bog to deal with graveyard decks, Baseju, for artifacts, enchantments, cavern of souls to deal with control decks because if you can get your cavern with uh, expedition map or even your titan, 
uh, it can help you get through counter spells very easily and once your card like the titan or the colossus is resolved uh, there's no turning back because your lands do the, do the work engineered explosives for small creature decks note that you can't get explosives with uh, urza saga uh, you can't even get it as a zero or a one because the converted mana cost is x relic of progenitus dismember endurance tireless tracker force of vigor and frogmoth are here in the sideboard uh, frogmoth let me read it for you you may not be familiar with this card it's a three generic uh, green green four four trample haste when it deals combat damage to a player, exile up to that many target cards from their graveyard. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Frogmouth for each creature card exiled this way. Gain one life for each non-creature card exiled this way. So great threat in replacement of the Primeval Titan. Uh, that's amazing against graveyard decks. Uh, this is great against Shadow decks, Murktide decks, and uh, Rhinos, as well as Living End. Speaking of Rhinos, the second best deck in Modern, in my opinion, is Teamer Rhinos. This deck's pretty expensive at $1,500. But it's well worth it because it's a pretty cool deck, pretty simple to play, pretty fast, and also interactive sometimes. Because you have access to cards like Fury, as well as Force of Negation, Fire and Ice, and Dead Gun to interact with the opponent. The goal is basically to cascade into a Crashing Footfalls, which make two 4 4 green rhinos with Trample into play. And you can do that with Charlotte's Agent or Violent Outburst. And the best part about this deck is Crushing Footfalls is the only card with converted mana cost lesser than 3. So every time you cast a Shardless Agent or a Violent Outburst, you will hit your Crushing Footfalls. Shardless Agents provide 2 extra power, but Violent Outburst can be cast at the opponent's hand step, so they all have their pros and cons. In terms of creatures, you have Bone Crusher Giant, Brazen Borrower, Shardless Agent, and Fury. Uh, fun fact... All the creatures in the deck, except Charlotte's Agent, have alternate casting costs that are lesser than 3. But they do not count as cards with converted mana cost lesser than 3. So it's a way for you to interact early on in the game without disrupting your own combo. In terms of spells, you have the Footfalls, obviously. Force of Negation to deal with counter spells uh, during the opponent's turn. Or also to deal with combo decks. Violent Outburst to cascade into the Footfalls. Dead Gone for removal. Fire and Ice for removal and also to gain time. Blood Moon can shut down entire decks. And as in terms of the lands, you have Beseju uh, and then a pretty basic uh, teamer land base. Don't have any utility lands apart from the Beseju uh, and the Yodawara. But you also have Gemstone Caverns in order to win the game even more quickly if uh, you're lucky. In the sideboard, you have Ashiok. Endur to and Endurance to deal with Graveyard Decks, Mystical Dispute to deal with Counter Spells and other blue decks, Narset uh, to deal with decks that draw cards and it's also a great card advantage. Uh, I've seen this card being played more and more in Modern recently. Vendillion Click, Force of Vigor and Chandra Awakened Inferno as a trump card. And now let's go on to the number one best deck in Modern and you guys probably guessed it, I know it's a boring choice. Is it Merktide? This is another pretty expensive deck due to the four Ragavans as well as uh, the land base. Uh, there's just so many expensive cards in here. Uh, so we have four Dragon's Rage Channeler, four Ragavan, one Brazen Borrower, four Merktide Regent. It's basically a blue red tempo deck that has pretty powerful threats in the form of Merktide Regent. Um, you also have four Consider, three, three Lightning Bolt. Surprisingly, not even four bolts. Uh, Bolt has fallen out of favor, surprisingly, of Unholy Heat. Two Spell Pierce, four Unholy Heat, four Counter Spell, four Expressive Iteration, which is a $7 uncommon, mind you, from Strixhaven. Three Archmage's Charm, four Mishra's Bobble. Notice, no Cryptic Command inside this deck. It's a tempo deck, not a control deck. The land base is pretty simple. It's a blue-red mana base, but it also has one Odawara, as well as two fiery islets. Sideboard, you have engineering explosives, fluster storm, relic, dress down, blood moon, force of negation, magus of the moon, mystical dispute, Jace the mind sculptor, subtlety, and Chandra awakened inferno as a trump card. So that's it for the top five uh, best decks in modern. Let me know what is the best deck in modern in your opinion. Is it even on this list? Also, if you want to build one of those decks. You can go to MTG Goldfish, my go-to website, not sponsored, but I always use this to uh, show off my deck list. And also, if you want to change or tweak some of, the, some of those lists, 
feel free to do so. Those are not set in stone. Those are just some very basic popular lists uh, that I found online. Uh, for instance, if you want to play something like a Spell Pierce in the sideboard of this, you can absolutely do so. Or if you want to play one Fluster Storm main deck, it's really up to you. So I hope you enjoyed the video for today. Let me know which format should I do next on the top five decks, or also if you want me to do top five budget decks or top five combo decks, top five mid-range decks, uh, that would be uh, pretty cool. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you guys later.